Have you ever wondered which of these filters is best for you, CLS or UHC? In this video, I'll be putting these two filters to test. My aim is to help you decide which one you should go for. If you are someone who lives in light polluted skies, then getting filters like these can dramatically improve your astrophotography. These filters can be very helpful in your astrophotography journey. They help you cut off the bad light pollution wavelengths and allow good wavelengths of nebulas, galaxies and so on. But the question that I get asked a lot is, which one should I choose? CLS or UHC filter? Well, let me begin by telling you a little bit about these filters. They both are from SV Bonnie, which makes good quality budget products. Both of these filters can be clipped inside your DSLR camera, which is very handy. Let me show you the wavelength graphs. With any light pollution filter, we want to suppress artificial light sources to reduce its transmission as low as possible and to maximize transmission of good wavelengths. This CLS filter has 90% transmission of main nebula emission line. It has 0.1 transmission of the major emission lines of artificial light pollution. It dramatically suppresses 589nm, 435nm and 578nm which is what you want. So that's the CLS filter. Well, what about the UHC filter? Well, let's look at its graph. One thing you can see clearly is that this is a bit more aggressive filter and it's quite tight, quite conservative in what it allows. So for example, galaxies which often have yellow wavelengths would be skipped in this filter. Therefore, it's not a good filter for galaxy astrophotography. But if you are working with nebulas, then this should work great because it's much narrower. Compared to the CLS filter, it largely does the same job, but it is narrower in what it allows. Enough of the theory, let's get into real sample images that I took with these filters. All these images are taken with Canon 1100D attached to SV Bonnie 102mm refractor on HEQ5 Pro mount. They are all guided exposures. Uh, so first, let me show you a single frame from the CLS filter. This is 90 seconds exposure with ISO 1600 on the Horsehead Nebula. You can see that it has captured good enough details with this filter. Light pollution is cut dramatically. The Horsehead Nebula and the Flame ne Nebula are visible. I would say it is a perfectly reasonable photo for 90 seconds. Let me show you the red channel only to see how much HA hydrogen alpha has been captured. Now let's see the same shot with the UHC filter. To my eye, the Horsehead Nebula has a bit more contrast compared to the CLS filter. As expected, it separates the object from the background more than the CLS filter. Here's a photo side by side. The UHC filter has captured more details as well. Here's the red channel of both photos. The differences are very small, but they are there. The USC filter has blackened the background more and pulled more data, I think. This will become clearer when you stack multiple files, and that's what we turn to now. So we have looked at 90 seconds exposures, single exposures. Now let's look at 20 minutes of stacked exposure. Let's have a look at the CLS version first. Please note that these photos are just stretched and color corrected. You have to further process them to look beautiful, but I thought I would show you the images that are not heavily processed. Well, this photo with the CLS filter looks reasonable compared to 
the single frame, the whole set looks better and more defined. The flame nebula looks better as well with more details exposed. Now let's compare this to the UHC version. I think the UHC filter has again sharpened the contrast. This is more visible in the flame nebula particularly. The CLS version has a grey tint, but the UHC one is quite blackened. Let me show you only the red channel of these stacked photos. Here's the one with the CLS filter, and here's the one with the USC. This could be a matter of personal taste, but I think the UHC picture is better in terms of structure and contrast. That said, both CLS and UHC filters do a great job. In the end, I think if you want something that is all-rounder, if you want to take photos of galaxies, Milky Way and nebulas, you should go for CLS filter. But if you, like me, uh, primarily take photos of nebulas, then UHC will perform better. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to type them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.